this series of Snap Circuits videos, we're looking at Project 233, the mind reading game, and going all the way to Project 245, the vibration or sound indicator. And so here with the mind reading game, that's what it looks like in the book, along with our scoreboard, and there it is on the board. And essentially the way this game works is that we build a circuit we're using the space for IC or slide switch to turn it on and off for speaker for output and a resistor to limit it and the way it is is it's usually a two player game but it can go up to four as shown in the book there and what you do is you take one of your two snap wires and you place it player one would take their two snap and put it on here somewhere so we'll put it like right there for instance and then we would take a piece of paper, like so, and then you would cover up your connection points. Let's do it this way. So you cover up all your connections like so, and then the other player would come along. So we'll turn our circuit on. And then your other player would come along and take his two snap, and then he would put it where he thinks the connection is that you put your two snap on. So for instance, if we put it on the bottom one here, oh, it doesn't sound, so that means player one obviously would get a point, otherwise player two would get a point if it sounded. If player two put it here, you see now player two would get a point because they found where their connection point is. And same thing for there. So that's essentially how Project 233 works. Now Project 234, which is the Enhanced Quiet Zone game, is very similar. And what we do on that one, instead of just having one snap, well now the player takes three snaps and say places them there, like so, and goes back and covers it back up again. And the purpose of this game, instead of the other way where you're trying to find the connection that one player has made, well now you're trying to find a connection that doesn't make sound. So the circuit behaves as normal, but if I put the snap here, or there, obviously we can tell there's no connection here. But there are connections everywhere else. So this connection here would get the player to a point, otherwise every other connection that player would lose a point. So that's pretty much how projects 233 and 234 work. Now projects 235 is our capacitor charge and discharge. So with project 235, it's our capacitor charge and discharge. There it is in the book. There it is on the board. And essentially the way it works is we've kind of talked about capacitors in previous circuits and how capacitance and the charging affects the operation of a circuit. Here we're just showing the charge discharge of how a capacitor works. So we have our green LED and our red LED plus our two switches, the push button and slide switch along with a 100 ohm resistor and a 1000 ohm resistor. Now when we turn on the slide switch we're going to create a circuit loop here which is going to charge up our capacitor and then we'll know the state of charge based on our green LED here. It should start off bright and then get dimmed to the point where it goes out telling us that our capacitor is fully charged and no more currents going through it. So turn on the slide switch. Our LED comes on and then turns off. So, and we have a 470 microfarad capacitor here so that gives us plenty of charge and then if we use our press switch our red LED comes on and then goes out as the capacitor discharges and now the capacitor is empty again we can repeat it by charging it back up and discharging it again with the push button <coughs> so that is how project number 235 works now, Project 236 
is going to be our sound wave magic. So with Project 236, the sound wave magic, there's our circuit, our speaker, and we make this little cutout that we fill with some table salt. And you see it there on the board. So we basically make ourselves a tone generator again, which you've probably seen in a previous circuit. It's very similar to that. And then we have our speaker attached with our jumper leads. So we're really not going to focus too much on the circuit because, again, we've seen this kind of circuit before. What we're going to look at is the speaker. And we take our little tray with salt <coughs> and we put some salt in there, put it on top of the speaker. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in on that since we're really only paying attention to what's happening there. And I do have some assault sitting in there and I hope that the camera is picking it up because it's a little hard to see on this screen. So I've got the circuit powered up and, we're, and of course sound is basically vibrations in the air so we're trying to look at the movement of the salt and its formation as we change tones on here. So let's get the tone generator going. And I didn't, of course, speak to it because I was letting you watch. But as you see, the salt has moved around there. And it's kind of gone from all these particles to kind of clumping together. Kind of around in the middle of the speaker there as we changed our tones around. Of course, the camera probably couldn't tell. But you could actually hear the sound of the salt moving around on the paper. Because, again, it's vibrations. That's what sound is. So it's an interesting little thing. And of course you could just shake this around and redo it again to repeat the experiment. But that is project 236. Now project 237 is going to be our Space War Amplifier. And project 237 is our Space War Amplifier. And there it is in the book. And it is on the board. And essentially, we take our Space 4 IC, which we've heard sounds from before, but we make use of 6 volts with our amplifier IC to, of course, amplify the output signal of the Space 4 IC so that it sounds louder. And we also have our little red LED here, which will, of course, flash and whatnot, depending on what sounds the Space 4 IC is putting out. So that kind of gives us a little visual indicator there as well. And we trigger the space where I see with our press switch while the overall circuit is turned on and off with our slide switch. So the circuit's powered on. So that's one sound. And another. And that one. So going through the various sounds of the space where I see, you can hear that they're significantly louder with the amplifier I see because that's the point of an amplifier to amplify the input signal so that it provides a stronger output signal. In this case, we're taking a low audio input signal from the space where I see, putting it through the amplifier, and getting a high amplitude output signal from our speaker. So that is the Space War Amplifier, Project 237. Now we're going to look at Project 238 and 239 with that circuit there. So we're looking at Project number 238, which is the trombone. And there's what our circuit looks like. And there it is on the board. And essentially, we're making use of our power amplifier with our 0.02 microfarad capacitor 
with our 1K resistor and variable resistor with our speaker and 6 volt power inputs to take the properties of both the capacitor and the amplifier together to produce an oscillating signal which as we know essentially translates into a frequency that we can hear audibly through the speaker and our variable resistor there can of course change that oscillation changing the output so we turn the circuit on right now it's way too high for us to be able to hear with the variable resistor where it is so we're going to start moving it down now we start getting some audio Now you might have noticed that when I have the variable resistor toward the middle here that it's actually at its lowest frequency. It tends to creep back up to a point. We go to this end and then the other end is where it gets to a really high frequency and then it gets out of range for our hearing at the very top there like we showed. So that's how Project 238 works. Now Project 239, the race car engine, just has us changing out our capacitor here. For our 10 microfarad cap and because it's polarized we want to have it going this way so the positive goes on to this side not toward the resistor otherwise it'll be reverse polarity so now if we turn the circuit on again it's still oscillating too high for us to hear but now the frequency will be lower And all the way down here, it's just clicking. You move it back up, it gets faster. So that's how Project 239 sounds at race car engine. And the interesting thing is, is that it sounds to me like the race car engine sounds from a Sega Genesis game. Or games, I should say. There's notably one called Race Driving or Hard Driving, if you want to look it up on YouTube and listen to how the sounds of that game is compared to what I just he heard here. Because it sounds very similar to just basically Sega Genesis sound effects for car engines. So anyway, that's Project 239, Project 240, and 241. Going to be that circuit there. So here we are with Project number 240, the power amplifier. And that's what the circuit looks like. That's what it is on the board. Essentially, we disassembled the previous project by just leaving the amplifier by itself and not giving it any actual input. So when we turn it on, what we're going to do is take our finger and we're going to touch this terminal here. Now I don't know if the camera can hear it, but the amplifier is producing audible static through the speaker right now. And that's basically because my body is providing an input signal to the amplifier that the amplifier is amplifying. Put that around your head, which of course is coming out the speaker and a signal that we can hear. Let me see if I can bring it up to the speaker. In fact, it's a little more audible down here. And I'm wondering if I can get a signal from something else nearby. I can sort of 
I was putting my hand around my smart plug there, which has got a Wi-Fi signal on it, and I can actually get the pulses of the refresh of it going through the speaker there momentarily. But anyway, that's how Project Note 240 works. Now, 241 is the feedback kazoo. And the difference there is that we still take our input there, but then we take our other finger and we go around to the speaker here and create a feedback loop. And by varying my pressure on those points, of course, you can tell I'm changing the output signal there quite a bit. So, you call it a feedback kazoo because we're basically using the properties of the amplifier as an oscillator by creating a feedback loop, which just gives us that audible sounds that we were hearing. So that's Project 241. Project 242 is going to be the AM radio. So for testing the high frequency AIC, what it has us do is basically build the AM radio circuit. And we're going to use our variable capacitor to tune the frequency that's picking it up on. And a variable resistor here is used for the power control on the power amplifier for the sound volume on the speaker. Let me turn this on. I've got that next volume. I've had to try to turn some things off that were producing electrical noise so we could try to pick up an AM radio station here. had something there. The problem is that I've got an electrical cord right here too, nearby. Something right here. Okay, you might be able to hear the voice there. So, I was basically using my hand there to kind of directionalize the antenna here to pick up the AM radio signals. So that shows that our high frequency IC is working, including our variable capacitor, because we weren't able to show that before, but like I said, I showed a previous project where you could test that itself. So, here we are, Project 243, the Fire Engine Symphony. Here's what it looks like in the book. There it is on the board. And here we're using our 3-volt source for the slide switch. But we're using all three of our ICs, our music IC, alarm IC, and space war IC, to all get mixed together into an output on our speaker. And we also have our 2.5-volt lamp here, which will also give us a visual indication. And we change our space war IC around with our photoresistor and press switch. And so when we turn on the circuit, you can hear our music IC, our space where IC is putting out a little bit of sound, and so is our alarm IC. And you can see our indication of our lamp there showing the output. And of course, you can hear it over the speaker as well. And you can hear the changes of the space where IC through the speaker there. That's essentially how Project 243 works. Now, Project 244 is Fire Engine Symphony 2. And what they have us do with that is we change out our speaker. So let me unplug the speaker 
and we replace it with our whistle chip. And because our lamp is here, our whistle chip will work just fine in its current configuration. Let me bring it back over here. Now the one interesting thing about Project 243 and 244 is they use this two snap here on the alarm IC. And if you remember from my inventory and troubleshooting video, this connection point on the alarm IC does not behave correctly compared to points two and three over here. So I'm a little interested in why they did it that way, but now that's what they wanted, so that's what it does. So we turn the circuit on this time. Again, our light lights up, and we can still change all our sounds, but of course now the sounds are a lot quieter because they're going out of the whistle chip. So that's project 244, and the last project is 245, the vibration or sound indicator. So project 245, it's our vibration or sound indicator. There it is in the book and there it is on the board. So here we're using our whistle chip to activate our music IC and our music IC is then feeding our space war IC which goes out to our speaker and our red LED there. Now if we want to have a sound repeating well we've got our press switch here we can do that with. But when we turn the circuit on see the space war IC plays for a while and then it will stop and it will stay that way. Now if we tap on the whistle chip, the Space War IC resumes, and it stays that way as long as the Music IC is outputting its signal to the Space War IC, because the Music IC, as we know, plays that Happy Birthday song, that's what's programmed into it. And that output is feeding the Space War IC, which is telling the Space War IC to stay on, which is then coming out of our speaker. Now, it's not only vibration that can do it, supposedly the whistle chip is sensitive enough that it could supposedly hear loud sounds as well. So, let's see if I can do it here. See, it's not, not quite able to handle the loud sound of claps next to it, but it will always respond to a tap. I do wonder though. No. Blowing out it doesn't make any difference. But again, you can tap on it and that will engage the music I see. So that concludes this set of Snap Circuits videos.